Hi, this is Dan from Magic Pachinko Restorations with another short video of a vintage pachinko machine that I just finished restoring. If you would like to see these kinds of videos, please uh, consider subscribing. You can just click on the subscribe link below. Uh, in addition to making videos about the machines that I restore, I've also done a, a fair amount of um, instructional videos on how to uh, do some restoration portions of machines if you're interested in doing your own. And if you haven't uh, already been there, MagicPachinkoRestorations.com is up and running. Um, plenty of information there. Uh, everything is sort of housed there, all the instructional videos, uh, pictures of machines I've done, information on pachinkos, pretty much everything you wanted to know. Um, I try to collect and get it all in one spot for you. So please uh, take a visit if you haven't been there. So this is a uh, customer restoration. This machine is, is not for sale. Uh, this is a 1975 Nisogen Model B. Uh, we call it Flower Garden because of the, the background. Uh, with all of the restorations that I do, um, I strip them completely down to their most individual parts, uh, re replace the artwork on the, the play field. Uh, this original artwork was very water stained and, and the colors get very faded after 40, 45 years. Uh, so that got replaced, everything gets taken off, everything gets cleaned, polished, uh, de-rusted, so on and so forth, and then reassembled. Um, the wood on these, I take the wood apart on the frames. This is a beautiful red mahogany wood. Uh, but after 40 years of grime, it, it looks pretty bad. So these get taken apart. Um, all the metal parts get de-rusted. And then this gets plain sanded and polyurethane so you can see the natural grain. Very pretty wood. Uh, I also do that with the, um, the back board of the machine. Uh, that gets sanded down, polyurethane. All of the guts obviously get taken off, uh, cleaned thoroughly, and then replaced. With all of the restorations I do, I include a 12 volt power supply. Uh, in the parlors, it would have been a 10 volt uh, supply, but when they get when they got yanked out of the, the uh, parlors, the uh, the power supply portion of it just got left behind. Uh, some people will hook 9 volt batteries to these. Uh, some people have never hooked power to them. This particular one, the the actual power connection was gone. Um, I make my own, but I've, I've rewired this. Uh, put in new bulbs. This particular one is, is kind of neat. I like it because down here is a red lens um, on the outside of the machine and I wired in an extra light bulb that keys off of the light bulb that comes on when you run out of pachinko balls. So let me plug this in and you can see the light up here which is the the normal ball out light is on uh, and it, it shines through a big red lens on the front of the machine but down here uh, most of the Nisogens don't have this feature, so this is kind of a neat feature. It just lights up red where the, uh, the ball feed is on the front of the machine. It's pretty neat. So these lights will go out when there's enough pachinko balls in the machine. It's controlled by this uh, leaf switch right here and a weight transfer of this part. So there's, uh, when you get ready to uh, play the machine for the first time, uh, let's assume that you have 500 pachinko balls. You should have at least 300 to 400, whatever. Uh, the first thing you want to do is make sure that the ball dump mechanism is latched. So right here, you'll notice that uh, this metal piece here, the end is red, and this piece right here, the end is red with a little arrow. You push to the right, and they latch. And that keeps the balls, when they come down this chute and come around, it allows them to travel across and go into the jackpot chamber. If this is released, then the balls will drop down this tube here and exit the machine. That's a, a maintenance kind of thing. Okay, So make sure this is over or you're going to end up with pachinko balls all over the floor. Uh, second thing you want to do is make sure the seesaw is in the correct position. This is the seesaw chamber. The seesaw is actually in there at an angle like this. Uh, you want to make sure it's on this angle rather than an angle like that. And you do that by pressing up on this little rod here. Again, I've got a little red arrow there that puts the uh, seesaw in the right position to start the machine. Uh, this particular machine uh, had some missing parts. These covers were missing. 
and this track cover was missing. Uh, these I make um, on, on my 3D printer, and I was fortunate that I had uh, these covers from some other machines. So nice thing about it is, is this machine has all the covers that it's supposed to, to keep it nice and clean internally. Okay, so let's turn it back around. Um, when, you, when you do uh, get ready to set this up, you're going to need a, a tray like this. That tray is going to sit right here. The losing balls exit through this. There's a hole right here, this shaft. And the winning balls come down through here and exit. So you need something wide enough to go from here to here and catch balls. It, it can be anything. It can be a cardboard box, a Tupperware, whatever. It doesn't, doesn't matter what it is as long as it will catch the balls. So now you can see the, the red lights. There's, this, is, this is the normal one, and then this is the special one down here, which I think is very cool. So uh, again, if you have, say, for example, 450, 500 pachinko balls, you want to put 90% of them in, in the upper hopper. So you're just going to pour them into the upper hopper. enough balls in the upper hopper, the, the two red lights go out, the remaining balls go in here, and then this would go in the back to catch the balls as they come out. Now right now the tulips are closed, there's three tulips. These are tulips, these are pay pockets, this is your center attraction and your upper attraction. When the tulips are closed it's much harder to win. Uh, when the tulips are open they, they give you a much larger target. Uh, so the first time that you press, what you're going to do is press down let this kind of roll off your thumb. First time nothing happens, it takes one cycle to get a ball inside the machine. The next time it will launch a ball. And again, the losing ball goes in the drain hole. So we'll just launch a few balls here, see if we get lucky. So I've, I've got a ball in this pay pocket. It paid out 14 balls as, as the winning prize. And you notice the, the two lights that are behind these lenses here came on. So that time I did get it in the tulip even though it was closed. It opened the tulip, it runs down a ramp, goes and internally will open this tulip. Now that this tulip is open and this one is open, again it's a much larger target. I want to show you something else. This is, uh, your center attraction is called jump. There's a, actually this is a, a spring steel right here. So if a ball either, either comes in from here or straight down, uh, it will hit this, this piece of steel and it'll bounce. If it goes down in the center, it'll drop straight through and open this tulip. If it goes off to this side, it'll go internally and open this tulip and this one. And if it goes on this side, it'll open this one. So I'll show you if I drop it in on this side, the tulips are open. Okay. So again, it would. I, I can't do it now because the door's open. It'll just it'll fly, but it would drop down through and bounce. It's pretty pretty neat. So now that the tulips are open, that's the machine. I hope you like it. We'll, we'll finish the video with uh, just some, some action of the machine. Okay, here we go.